first concept is dry air. Air, if it has no humidity, no water vapor in it, is made up of primarily nitrogen and oxygen, and then there's a distant third and a distant fourth. I, don't, I can't remember if it's argon or CO2, but they really fall off. It's primarily a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. So it's about 79% uh, and 21%. If you just neglect the rest of these, and they're not, you know, just for some energy calculations, and humidity calculations, you just approximate dry air as being 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. It ha then has a molar mass for dry air of 28.97 kilograms per kilomole. Then we have now moist air and so it'll be the dry air plus H2O vapor, water vapor. And that's what we're breathing. As the amount of moisture goes up, the amount of dry air goes down a little bit to make room for the moisture at constant pressure. And then you can only put so much moisture into air. Then it becomes saturated. So saturated air is if you tried to put more water vapor into it, it wouldn't hold it. It would do out or condense out. How do we describe the maximum? Well, we had this for an ideal gas mixture, the concept of partial pressures. And so the total gas pressure of the moist air is made up of the dry air contribution or the partial pressure associated with the dry air plus the partial pressure associated with the water vapor or the vapor pressure. Let's say we started where, where the total pressure was 100 kPa and it was dry air to begin with. Well, the partial pressure of water vapor and dry air is zero, so the, the dry air partial pressure is 100 kPa. True? But let's say uh, you, you went to moist air. So with moist air, maybe the partial pressure went up to 1 kPa. Well, then you have 99 kPa for the dry air to, to remain at 100 total. And then maybe it went to 2 kPa. Well, then it went to 98 so that it makes room for the moisture. So what is the maximum that the partial pressure can be? Well. The maximum is when it's the saturation pressure, and that's straight out of the tables. And so we can look up at a given temperature the saturation pressure for steam. If I just grab a number, let's say it's uh, 20 degrees C, the saturation pressure at 20 degrees C is 2.339 kPa. So I could not have a partial pressure of water vapor at 20 degrees C above that. The maximum it would be is 2.339. The measure of the relative humidity, often we use the symbol phi for relative humidity. It's defined as the mole fraction of the vapor in the moist air mixture divided by the mole fraction of vapor if it would be saturated at the same temperature and pressure. So this is the maximum, and both of these are at the same temperature and pressure, the total pressure. We recall that the partial pressure, let me kind of tuck it over here, P sub I is equal to Y sub I times P total, true? The concept of partial pressure and mole fractions. So you can replace the ratio of Y sub V by the partial pressure of the vapor divided by the maximum partial pressure. Well, we already just talked about what that is. That's the saturation pressure at that temperature and pressure. Don't change the total pressure. So there's the definition of relative humidity. This relative humidity changes dramatically in the summertime in Houston. It's very hot, high humidity, right? You can feel the moisture. It, it, it's harder to breathe for those that are used to dry climates. You go to El Paso and uh, you can uh, feel the dryness if you're not used to the dry. Well, the next concept that we need to deal with is dew point temperature. Well, what is dew point temperature? Think about in the 24-hour day, 
here is high noon, here is midnight, so here again is midnight, right? So we go to the next day at midnight. And if you plotted temperature, you would probably find that around 6 a.m., most days, you get the lowest of the low temperature because the sun is now going to start rising and it's going to start pumping energy into our atmosphere, true? But over the night, it's been radiatively cooling, radiatively cooling. So the temperature is typically a low right there. It's been coming down. Then the sun comes up and it peaks maybe at 2 or 3, 4 o'clock. And then it starts heading back down. And there you go. And this is supposed to match up with that temperature right there because it's a cycle. What, what you know is that when the air is very high temperature, it can hold a lot of moisture. But when it's at a low temperature, it can't hold a lot of moisture. And sometimes the, and at night, the temperature gets below the dew point temperature. And you get water coming out of the air and collecting on your lawn, on your car, on driveways, on roofs, and other places. It didn't rain, but there's definitely water. It's condensate coming out of the air. It's, the temperature went below the dew point temperature for whatever condition it was, okay? Now, if you're in Houston, almost every morning it's wet on the lawn. If you're in El Paso, very rarely is it wet with dew on the lawn and you're on your car because it didn't have a lot of moisture in the beginning of the hot day before it started cooling off at night. San Antonio, some days you'll go out, your car will be all slobbery with dew. Some days it'll be dry. Maybe the temperature's below freezing. Some days you'll have frost on your car, frost on your roof. Some days you won't, depending on how much moisture there was at the beginning. These concepts you're already very familiar with, relative humidity and dew point temperature, as well as just the dry bulb temperature.